here.
What up? I'm doing all right, MPC. How are you? NBC says I'm doing fine. Bought your facial rig tutorial and, and am currently on chapter three. Oh, that's nice. Thanks for purchasing that. My brain's a little frazzled because I found out two days ago that I have to move by October 31st. And since everyone's pretty much working from home indefinitely at this point, now I'm trying to super, super quickly determine whether or not I should move out of LA or not. And a month and a half is not a long time to figure that out and execute it. See down a little. just copied all this over from the browse file and I'm kind of just retrofitting it, replacing brow with lid and, and stuff like that. Let's see. Int Q. Don't think we need any of this. Base groups, that's all fine. Root control. I don't think we need a root control for the lid setup. And then cleanup's gonna go at the bottom.
All right, that should be a good starting point. NPC asks, what are your naming conventions when it comes to rigging? You prefer suffix or prefix, camel casing or underscores? Ellen Arthur, beginning, end, or middle. Uh, I mean, you should be able to see it on this selected object here, unless the text is too small, but I always start with the side at the beginning, capital L underscore, capital R underscore, or capital M underscore, and then I end with the type of object it is, but actually that's not a good way to say it. I don't, I don't use prefixes uh, as far as like underscore group, underscore joint. I, I, use, I use it to kind of give an inclination as to what it's being used for, but also kind of what it is. So like, I used to do underscore group, but that's pointless because like a group is just a null. It's it's better to say what it's used for. So so I do underscore NUL, underscore null, for groups that are being used as just like a dummy object, kind of like a locator. Um, I don't really use locators anymore because they have um, a shape node and it's just an extra node that you don't really need. Maybe if I'm testing something out just to get a visual, but for the most part, I use groups instead of uh, locators. And if it's just for the sake of being an object in space, I just call that underscore null. Whereas if I use a group for the sake of an actual outliner group where I'm just containing other objects in, then I'll call that underscore group. But as for like top level stuff, I tend to switch it up and put the pre prefix at the beginning just to kind of distinguish that that is uh, kind of the parent most kind of an uppermost group um, just to easily be able to grab that. So like the skin geo is called skin underscore geo, but we have geo underscore body as like kind of this top group that it's in. My, my naming conventions kind of change over time, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And then, like, if I create a joint that I want skin to be bound to, or, or if it's just part of the bind skeleton, they will be underscore bind, whereas if it's just sort of like a, a dummy joint that I'm using to drive something, uh, then I'll call it underscore joint, just so I can easily grab all of the actual final bind uh, joints with by querying underscore bind and not grabbing every joint in the scene. And then controls, I just do underscore ctrl hello ben how are you let me see i need to go in this build file and tell it to build this new riglid script that we saved where in here does it build the face what the heck? Why did Siri just think I told her to translate something? Face rigs. I'll just query the upper and then in the script just swap that for lower at some point.
Now let's import it. See if that builds without an error. No object matches name. Rig lid 79. At least it got to the lig rids, lig, lid rigs file. It's kind of a tongue twister. Lid rigs. just because we didn't create any controls yet so yeah this sh should be fine i'll just comment out the cleanup section for now because we don't need it uh yeah mpc maya 2022 did uh switch to python 3 pain in the butt but i i think all of my my publicly available scripts have been converted over to be future proofed So let's actually position these eyelid proxies where they need to be. And I guess we'll Yeah, I guess we'll leave these other joints visible just because these are parented to it. Sorry for the visual clutter. Downsides to making a game friendly rig. Everything parented to each other. Wish there was a way to to just toggle the visibility of the bones and not the joints, like the bones that go between the actual transform nodes. But as far as I've ever been able to figure out, the only way to do that would be to completely hide this joint, including its bone. All the none of the drawing styles, just get rid of the connection. Visual connection. Okay, so let's roughly position where we want these controls to be. Let's hide these. These are going to represent where the four major eyelid controls get created. MPC, uh, yeah, this is K this is Kayla too. She did get a complete uh, model upgrade. I guess I'll just isolate these while I place them. Mm. 
Jick Design says double grouping removes the visual, really bloats the scene. Oh yeah, I think I know what you're talking about, but yeah, this is going to be a game-friendly rig, so I cannot add extra groups to the skeleton. Though I guess if I had just a separate game-friendly version that you swap to at the end, I could do whatever I wanted. That's not the plan at the moment. Why do these build kind of staggered like that? Doesn't really matter. I could rotate some of these. Probably makes sense. my fourth one go uh-oh <laughs> why do i oh there it is wait no oh. did i accidentally not isolate it or did i accidentally delete it there it is oh now i forgot the Eyeball. By the way, the uh, the exclusive Twitch sub chat on the Discord server is live at this point, I believe. I haven't really posted about it anywhere, but if you're a subscriber to this Twitch channel and you're part of the Frigging Awesome Studios Discord server, you should have access to some exclusive places now. And I'm hoping to do some sub-only uh, streams on that on the private video chat that's in that section as well. I'm not sure what the topic of the first month's one will be, but um, it'll be something.
So these are going to be the uh, the curves that the joints slide along, basically, or that the upper and lower lid controls slide along as you do a blink animation. So I'm making sure they overshoot the maximum amount of range that you'd actually want. Thanks for the follow, Jimmy. And thanks for the follow, Joshy Zombie. Sorry, I'm a little lower energy today. Feel free to ask me questions if you want me to talk more. Thanks for the follow, Venker. MPC, these curves are going to be paths for the four controls on each eyelid to follow as a blink animation. So a control is going to be created at each of these uh, proxy locators here, and then they will become attached to these vertical curves so that when you move a master upper lid or lower lid control up and down, they travel from top to bottom along the curve. And that's better than a rotational blink control because that will ensure that we can create uh, a blink on a character without a perfectly spherical eye, as well as spherical eyes. All right. So everything's kind of in place. Let us hit mirror and see if the mirror function I wrote months and months ago actually works. So all these curves and locators on the right side should go into their respective positions. And it looks like it worked. Hooray. So 
yes, if I get around to turning all this new stuff into a proper uh, advanced face tutorial part two, uh, that will definitely be part of it. But right now it's all sort of R&D and, and making it for the sake of, of using on my own rigs. Making a proper tutorial from beginning to end is honestly like the hardest thing out of anything I could possibly do. But uh, I do plan on doing it for advanced faces again at some point once I figure it all out. But yeah, just sort of messing around live without worrying about editing or saying the wrong thing is far, far easier than making a beginning to end tutorial series. Banker says, hey Josh, nice to see you streaming. Been learning a lot from you the last couple of years. Oh, thanks. Specifically to do facial rigging. Have you ever had to deal with non-spherical eyes and how hard was it? I don't know if I've personally encountered that, but as I was just saying, I'm not sure if you heard, this system I'm building right now will, uh, it, it because we're just building curves for joints and controls to ride along, we can make them any shape we want. So it won't be an issue with this setup. Um, uh, but yeah, basically just adjust the curves to fit the shape of whatever uh, type of eye you have. Jimmy Animal says, why are there so many bones controllers deformers on the lips? Uh, they're all joints right now, um, and there's just one per span, I think. Yeah, it's one per span so that when we create a curve to represent the overall shape to move around, we have one joint per span to get the smoothest deformation possible. Could probably maybe get away with every other one, but... There's not that many spans on the left, so I think one-to-one -one is fine. Alright, so this prep file should be good to go, so now we can start actually creating the lid rig. Let's see... So the first thing we're going to do is create a control for each of these red locators. System 1100 says the amount of options and buttons is making me consider DreamWorks animators to be space engineers. I mean, it's visually over overwhelming to some extent, yeah, but a lot of this just has to do with how Maya is drawing all these connections between bones. Like, it would be a bit easier to, to read visually if we didn't have all these uh, large amounts of connections that just show how they're parented. But there's no way to easily turn that off in Maya. So, like, if I unparented all of these from each other, you'll see suddenly it's a lot easier to read. You don't have all these crazy lines cluttering up the visual. But yeah, it's a bit it's a bit visually overwhelming, but it simplifies it when you're just focusing on one area at a time. So right now, like, this is all I'm worrying about. And to some extent, I'm not even worried about this bottom clump either. We're just focusing on the upper lid at the time being. No, no SpaceX affiliation here. And thanks for the follow, Kirill. Okay. So we need to grab the names of all of these in our script. This is going to be... Well, I guess first we'll do our perception, and first thing up is major controls, the proxies, upper will be the prefix followed by upper star ERX, that should grab everything up there, let's print it and see if it grabs it. Supper. 
any links to what I'm working on? Um, do you mean like links to other material? Um, because I mean, I've, I've posted a few photos over time, but there's really not much to show right now outside of just that we're rigging Kayla 2, which is the successor to my Kayla rig from my site um, that I released years and years ago, like seven years ago or something. Uh, but we're just going through the process of rigging it and and she'll be uh, online when she's done. Which probably is going to be a while still. Uh, thanks for the follow, Jasm. All right. So let's run that. Open up the Maya script editor so we can see what it spits out. And it spit out nothing. Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah, we got it. It worked. By the way, um, whoever it was, Jimmy, Jimmy Animal, you were curious about why there were so many uh, lip joints. So when I hit build, it, it also builds the, the aspects of the face we scripted out already, including the brow, which uses the same sort of system that all those lips will. So all of these eyebrow joints are following along with, um, let me just isolate it. All these brow joints are following along with a curve and there's one per span. So it creates, you know, just a nice soft fall off that represents the whole, uh, uh, the whole fleshy area without it, uh, creating any, any, uh, non-flexibility in how it comes across. You also then get an individual control for every span so that the animator has complete control over what it looks like. If they ever need to get that, that uh, nitty gritty. You feel like you've seen those follow overlay guys somewhere. Oh, oh, the the robots, the Mecha Mechs? Yeah, those are two of my character rigs that I sell at uh, friggingawesome.com. Maybe you've seen them around. NPC says, I know that you're kind of improvising and improving on the go, but for a normal rig, how much time does it take you? And did you manage to get enough sleep? Uh, yeah, I slept fine, but um, it's always hard to answer how long it takes to rig a character because it all depends on how finished and how advanced or streamlined the rigging systems you're using are. If you're rigging a character this complicated or a, char a character like this with advanced, the with rigging systems as advanced as the ones we're creating here, it's just irrational to do it from scratch. It would take forever and there would be bugs all the time just from user error. But once I finish this system, or if I was using someone else's system that has all the advanced features just in there, you should be able to knock out a character, including a face, in less than two weeks for sure. But for, if you tried doing it from scratch, it would be a mess, and it would probably take you one to two months. It's So it makes no sense for someone to just rig something from scratch in Maya, unless it's a very simple, very simple rig. You gotta, you gotta make it modular, gotta script out some stuff. Or in the future, if Maya gets closer to Houdini, it's more about just copying a node template and then swapping out some connections. System 1100 says, I've seen a lot of previous software that DreamWorks used and in every single footage of them using them and they were so slow. How the ever living God did they finish Toy Story is beyond me? Well, DreamWorks didn't make Toy Story, had to point that out, uh, Pixar did, but um, as far as modern systems go, DreamWorks and Pixar both use proprietary software that runs in real time. Uh, so the slow aspect doesn't affect the animators usually, but other, other departments doing other stuff, it's still probably pretty slow. Like simulation and, and stuff like that. We were all using Maya when I, when I worked at DreamWorks doing cloth and hair simulation and, and it's definitely pretty slow waiting for simulations to go through. And um, some of my recent rigs were very slow as well, but I've since learned how to optimize them correctly. So those Mecha Mech rigs, the ones that pop up when somebody follows, they uh, they run in more than real time on most workstations. Even in, with two of them in the scene, you could probably hit uh, 24 FPS even on like a mid-range laptop. All right, where were we? 
All right, so we grabbed the proxy uppers. We now need to create a control uh, for each of those. Trying to remember what it is we actually did when we when we tested all this out by hand. I think we also need to create some some curves that run along the outside of the lid. And that is where the actual skin joints will ride along. But we need to create that based on these controls. So we'll just throw these in there. Rig Station asks, Hey Josh, are you really retired from the 40 hours a week rat race? For the time being, I am. Um, I've just been bouncing back and forth between focusing on my own stuff and doing some studio freelance for PSYOP. Um, uh, it's very, I, I, I mean, if I'm doing stuff for PSYOP, then yeah, it's expected that it's eight hours a day. But working from home, it's a little bit more flexible sometimes. But uh, when I'm working on my own stuff, it's honestly so hard to, to force myself to work as much as I should. Um, I mean, I originally said Kayla was going to come out at the beginning of this year. It's, I mean, obviously it's in it, and I've just been working on my own ringing stuff way less than I should. Working from home is uh, definitely hard to stay motivated, but... But for now, I'm, I'm trying to have more balance in my life, and I just don't have it in me to, to just work 40 hours a week at a desk. My back would just not let me. Um, okay, so let's loop through these and create controls. For... Per per pere du hun du hun hunter. I don't know how to say that name. Says I'm so high right now. Do you smoke weed? <laughs> Sometimes I smoke weed. I, I live in California, so it's legal. Um, it usually just makes me paranoid, though. So I don't do it very often. But I do like that it's zero calories compared to alcohol. All right, let's copy. Let me open up the brow file and copy the controls line. PR says, do you need to have a huge knowledge about anatomy for rigging properly? Uh, it certainly helps. Um, as far as rigging for stylized characters, it's probably not as important as for realistic characters, and all I've ever done is stylized characters. But if you don't have any understanding at all, I'm sure you're always going to end up with some weird-looking deformations, such as not placing the shoulder uh, the shoulder bone far enough out, and it like compresses in when it goes down and stuff like that. But that's that's almost more just learning the limits of the technology and you know, just looking up what's the best joint placements on a rig more than actual anatomy. But if you're doing something realistic, you absolutely would need to, to know how all the muscles are supposed to look when they bend and stuff, when they uh, flex. All right, major controls. Let's copy these three lines. Place proxy with control, that's fine. If we want them to be squares. I think I was doing like diamonds, so that, that is a square just with a rotation. Offsets, yes. Color, make it red. Hide translate, no. Hide rotate, no. Oops. Actually, wait, maybe we do want it to rotate. Yeah, we want to hide the rotation and the scale. In this case, it's just translation. The smaller nitty gritty controls, the tweak controls, will be able to rotate and scale, though. Hide visibility, yes. Rotate X default. We'll make that 45 so it's a diamond. 
R Y zero R Z. Oh wait, I didn't want that to be X. Sorry. Yeah, I wanted it to be R Z. Rotate. Key oh, rotate order keyable. No, I guess zero because it's not a rotatable control. That should be fine. That works. And that'll push it forward in space. So I think I think that'll work. Let's build this. a little big we'll make them smaller by default and we'll just check that next time so now we're going to create a joint under each one of these and these aren't going to be bind joints for the actual skin it's just going to bind uh, a curve that we have not created yet, which the upper lid joints will ride along. Thanks for the follow, Pact Warlock. Uh, I think I have a rig utils dot joint. We actually copy that over. Oh wait, it's under joint utils. Joint basic. Well, thanks for the thousand bits, Sats Japan. I think that might be our first bits ever. I have my computer volume turned really far down right now because I'm using just little earbuds connected to my phone so that I don't have to have a big headset on. But did, uh, did it successfully read out uh, what you said? And thanks for the follow, Mewtrue. Thanks, Mewtrue. You did a rigging class in college. Was that the last time you ever rigged? Oh, the bits are not are not reading out loud. Let me see if there was a an option for that that I missed. And then I'll replay it. I guess I'll I'll temporarily turn up the music on my PC so I can or the sound on my PC so I can hear it better. Hopefully that won't create a feedback of the music. Let's see. Bits. Donor message. This window is so tiny. Text to speech. There it is. Now let me replay that, see if it works. I love your mix. Looking forward to Kalo 2 THX. Hooray! THX. <laughs> nope, it doesn't sound. You could all hear the, the text-to-speech those times, right? Creating a joint. Let's just call it roll.replace underscore CTRL with underscore joint.
should find that parent that joint to the control. Thanks for the follow, Senor Ribka. Oh no, an error. Control zero dot replace. Thanks for the follow, Prying Prying Pan Joe. It's a good name. Why don't I see joint? There is no joint. Oh, oh, we parented it to the wrong thing. Also, we didn't move it into place. Control zero. And then let's snap it over. Actually, instead of running that all out, I'll just use this function I have to move objects to other objects positions. Hooray. Let's make these joints red so that we can differ differentiate them. Or maybe we'll make them black. Error reading data. Probably because I didn't include a variable for that in that file. What file was that? Joint utils. Okay, let's just add an extra color in here. these corner joints here I guess we can use those as points to snap a curve creation to we'd want to snap starting with the corner and then each of these controls or joints that we just created to create a nice curve that we can deform with one control at each point so I guess I guess first we should create corner corner controls so that we can bind each point to something. But before we do that, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break.
So let's create controls for the two corners. I'll just do that for this section. See what these joints are called. Whenever I add those curly brackets at the beginning of a name and write pre as the filler for it, it means it's going to fill that with whatever the prefix for this uh, uh, lid setup is, which in the default sense will always be either L underscore lid or R underscore lid. But the reason I write it like that is in case I ever need to add extra lids and I call it like lid two or lid upper, it'll always grab whatever it's called. So I just use that almost any time that I'm referencing a an object name in this in my in my rigging scripts here, at least within this system. So if that exists we want to pretty much do all of this again. I will create a variable for this since I keep having to mention it. That should work. <clears throat> Let's try it. Oh no. Too few arguments given. What line was that? It went away. 64. Oh, duh. like it. All right. So let's copy that over for the outer lid. Or sorry, the outer corner. Corner out. That's it. Hooray. All right. Now that we have all of these, let's create a list, an ordered list of each of these controls we have now. So it would start with corner in, then go control one, two, three, four, and then out. And there's a, there's not always just four controls, depending on what kind of lid we're building with this system. So we will just add it to the list as it loops through. So we definitely want to, well, first let's 
controls, empty list. We're gonna add, I guess I could have created it here, but whatever. I like it having it up at top like that. And then controls.append. Control zero. And then we're not gonna add the outer one until the end. So as it loops through each of these, we'll do controls.append. Control zero. Control zero is different once you get to here because it overrides it. And then at the very end, we do controls.append. Corner out. Not replace B and D with control. The reason we did that is because the variable for that we were just using a generic control one when we did it. So uh, I just simply figured out what the name would be instead. All right, so let's have it print controls at this point and see if it's the correct order and that they're all there. This is all assuming that when we grab all of these proxies that it automatically sorts it in alphabetical order, one, two, three, four, or numerical order. So hopefully this works. Uh-oh, I misspelled something. 97 corner. Oh, what did I just press? Some hotkey. Get out of here, Microsoft. Nobody likes you. Apparently there's a hotkey to open Internet Explorer or Edge or whatever that was. All right, so it printed it out and the order is corner in, one, two, three, four, corner out. Hooray! That's what we wanted. All right, so now let's create a curve. Let's steal some, some code from our browse when we created a curve. Where did we create a curve? Create curve. So it's going through, what is this count variable? Count is equal to one. Okay, I'm just gonna trust that this all works. I'll just copy it over. Just look through here, see what's happening. D joints, what are D joints? Oh, well, that's because we hadn't created driver joints at this point, but here we have, don't need any of this D joint stuff. Looks like it's already looking for controls list, so that naming is the same. And then to exec, we don't have a degree variable for the lids, so let's just get rid of that and type three, which is the default. Let's see, curve, curve. This would be safe in future proof this, I'll call it curve upper. I'm not sure if we'll need to reference this after we build the lower one, but just in case. Keep it clean and separate. All right, we need a dejoints list. So let's just create that up here and then append. dejoints.append Do that after each of these. Okay. 
All right. Should be fine. Let's see if that works. Curve is not defined. We missed renaming it at some point. Curve upper. No errors. Maybe hidden by default. Yeah. So let's grab world lid and all the stuff we've been working on. Hooray! So this is where our actual upper lid deformation joints are going to live on this curve. So that as we pull a major control down, all of these individual controls will move to a closed position. Like so. Okay, what step will we do next? Still haven't 100% decided if I want to do a closest point sort of setup. Or remaps. The reason I had so much trouble last stream creating remaps is because I wanted to have basically, I isolate these. I wanted to have a single remap node that controlled where this object would fall based on a major blink control, starting from the top of the curve to the bottom of the curve. But the top of the curve isn't the neutral default way that any character would be modeled. So in this case, this control or this joint starts right here, which is not the top, which means if we create a remap that says when some driver control, some driver blink control is up here, make it be here. And when it's at the bottom, make it be here. That means if we ever adjust the way this joint slides along this curve to make sure the blink looks nice in the in-between areas, besides, you know, fully open, fully closed, this neutral starting point here is going to slide around and not stay put. But I think it'll be fine if I create, <clears throat> excuse me, if I create two remap nodes, one that slides from neutral to top and a separate one that slides from neutral to bottom. And it won't be the most perfect system of all time because that does mean as you slide past this neutral point, it might ever so slightly change speed. But having just a separate remap node that goes from almost fully open to closed, I think works. And then you can just adjust the animation curve on that one, or not animation curve, but that like remap node curve graph of how it slides. Like maybe it eases in so that it doesn't, you know, get to the bottom too quickly or something like that. Makes a nice shape with in relation to the others. I think it makes sense to just do a remap node that goes from, from neutral to zero and then from neutral to one separately. However, the downside to that, if anyone remembers, we created our blink control so that when you slid it left to right, it would basically make like the right side slide down and the left side slide up to create um, this sort of a shape, which is kind of standard on rigs. But doing that through the remap nodes was a little iffy. I mean, we figured it out with some math. I'm trying to remember how exactly we did it. I guess it wasn't that complicated, that aspect of it. It was just when it moves left, add 0.2 or whatever. And when it moves right, subtract 0.2. I guess we can do that. If we use closest point, then all we have to do is rotate the blink control and or locators or nulls parented to that will just move around and 
everything underneath it will react accordingly. I think we'll just try doing remap again. I think, I think that'll be fine. Evelenge asks, what Disney Dreamers movies have you worked on and what character? Um, I worked on the animated short Feast, which played before Big Hero 6. It was about a dog eating a bunch of food. And then I worked on Big Hero 6. But I didn't do rigging on those. I went through rigging training. But I was doing more cloth and hair simulation on those shows where I would adjust physical parameters to move the cloth and hair around. And also... Um, what should we call it? Like clean up art direction shapes when the characters didn't like hold up in the shots that got animated and stuff like that. Actually, I, I can probably just find my demo reel for it. One second. Where is it? It's not my most up-to-date demo reel, but there's one that just has all my Disney stuff. Okay, so that, that link in the chat is, is a reel of some of the Disney work that I did. And it also has descriptions on the screen for what I did in each shot. so long ago. All right, where were we? So we created the curve. All right, we were just deciding whether or not we want to try to do remaps or not. And I think the answer is yes. So I'm the hair and cloth guy in Different Ghost Asks. Sometimes, yeah, most of my major jobs have been cloth and hair. Um, it's more of the smaller jobs and my own business where I focus on the rigging stuff. Kind of just fell into that because one of my first major jobs was the Disney apprenticeship. And they brought us all in with the assumption that we'd be rigging. And then they kind of pushed us towards the cloth angle. And I kind of just followed that thread because after that apprenticeship, I had a reel full of Disney cloth and hair work. So it was easy to get more cloth and hair work. Of Evalange, I was only there for a one-year apprenticeship. Uh, so they have like checkpoints and then one big checkpoint at the end where they decide if they want to make you full-time. Uh, it was like 50-50, not, not for riggers, but for uh, for the whole apprentice program, I'd say it was probably 50-50 whether they had enough slots for everybody or whether they thought everyone was up to snuff. They actually didn't even keep a single animator from that whole group because they just didn't have any spaces for them. Okay, so let's create a major blink control. After another bathroom break, because I drink a lot of water.
Thanks for the follow, Salmon Shark. Must be great whenever I start bopping my head to the music that's playing on my headphones that you can't hear. Create an upper blink control. I guess I'll do that up above the corner controls. It's a good name for this whole section. And eh, whatever. one called triangle make it a bit bigger and the yellow hide translate no hide rotate yes hide scale yes hide visibility get rid of the rotation here okay What will we snap this to? That's a that's a good question. Hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> because it's building with an arbitrary number of controls. I guess we could grab the list of controls, divide it by two, and round it. And then say... How do we how do we know if we want to grab if we like grab the length of the list of controls divide it in half and then round it's gonna arbitrarily i like i don't know if it always grabs the higher one or the lower one when you round if it's at like like if it's at 5.5 .5 and you round does it always go to five or always go to six let's i guess i could always just grab whatever's before the decimal point but let me just let me just test out what happens when I run round in Python. I haven't done this in a while. I think it's just round. Okay, so 5.5 .5 rounds to 6. I wonder why that is. And if that's 100% reliable. Seems like it. be safe I could always just grab the first digit I'll probably just do that just to make sure it doesn't break at some point I guess that means we have to make our blink after we create the rest of the controls
I think I wrote this so that I can make it a list. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do controls. Maybe I'll do it on a separate line to understand it more. Made one is equal to controls, and it's gonna be the length of controls divided by two. Oh, you know what? Hmm, let me let me check something. We do actually, yeah, based on those testings, it looks like it always returns a float. Thanks for the follow, Salmon Shark. I'm not sure if I said that. So this should give us something point something every time. If I really want to be positive, let's force it to be a float. So controls, and the iterator number of controls is, the ID of controls is length of controls divided by two. then what we actually want is all of this as a string just the first digit because we're never going to do this more than nine driver joints that would be ridiculous so i'm just going to assume it's always one digit or you know what instead i'll do a dot split say everything before the decimal Print mid one, see what that gives us. Or I guess we'll just assume it works for now. Let's see if we get an error later. And then mid two is equal to, and I guess it's mid one ID, mid two ID. We'll make it an integer of mid one ID plus one. Well, that should give us the IDs of these two middle ones, hopefully. So then we're matching controls mid one ID and controls mid two ID. Hope this works. Does it need a joint? I don't think so. So let's get rid of the joint lines. All right, let's run this. I have a feeling something's gonna error. It's kind of a complicated thing we're doing to grab that first digit there. Error. Could not convert string to float, 107. A second. Okay, now I'm kind of lost. So many brackets and curlies, or, or not curlies, but brackets and a, a parentheses. Okay, so if if we're looking at controls, length of controls divided by. Okay, I think if we have a list of controls. We're we're looking for an object that's in the controls list with the iterator, or the ID. Length of controls divided by two, that's a float. So I think this dot split needs to go like somewhere in here. This is confusing. I'll separate this out into a few lines, I guess.
So say a number is equal to length of controls divided by two. That'll give us like 5.5 or whatever it was or something. So now that we have 5.5, we want a number that is definitely an integer and we're grabbing it from a float of, probably don't need to be declaring all these things, but just to be safe, a float of num. Float of num dot split. What's over before that? Let's see if that works. I guess we could just test it out in the Maya script editor. Num is equal. Just. It spits out a float, so I'll just write in like 5.5 or something. Float has no attribute split. Float of this string. Float has no attribute split. There we go. There we go. Okay. So let's copy this line over. So complicated for such a silly thing. Probably unnecessary. Let's run this and see what happens. Watch that. Match takes at least two arguments. Rig, lid, rig lids 110. Rig dot match. Oh, I never told it what it's driving. Control 2, which is the highest offset group. Yay, no error. And where did it put it? Okay, it looks like it didn't work properly. It grabbed one number higher than it was supposed to. Now, why is that? I guess I'll just tell it to be minus one then? But then what if... Hmm. So it's... One, two, three, four, five, six long. There's six controls. Six divided by three is three. Wait, I feel like these are not the numbers we're dealing with. Let me, let me print it out. Print num and print mid ID one, mid one ID. What? Three and three? One, two, three. So we have three and four. Oh, I know, I know. Because of how lists start with start by counting with zero instead of one. I guess I'll just say all of this plus, or is it minus? Yeah, probably minus one. Looks correct. Yippee.
and we'll have it filled further out to the uh, curve position. All right. <clears throat> We've got our blink control in there. Trying to remember what math I use to calculate both. The translate Y and the translate X of how these objects are sliding along their curves. So when it's in percentage mode, it's sliding from zero to one. I know I use a plus minus average node to add them together. So I think I did. I'm trying to remember how I normalized it to be zero to one is the thing. wasn't anything complicated, I'm just having a hard time remembering for some reason. So translate Y plus translate X. That equals an arbitrary number though. And where does the remap come into place? I guess I could open up the other file and just check it. Our test lid file. So this is our rig test file, or li our lid rig test file where we, oh wait, looks like we disconnected. Let me go one older version, see if that one has it. Okay, this one has everything working. Ignore that that one on top of it that's moving with it. That was a test. And so we had it. Let me just break these connections. It's so distracting. Okay, so we got this working in our test file. And we had it so left and right creates that sort of motion. So let's check what the actual setup was. All right, so I had our white control, translate X, translate Y. Okay, so those are each going into a remap node. That goes from zero to negative 6.178 in this case, which is just the verticality that the upper lid needed to go to, to uh, like, like a negative Y, just to visually represent the point at which the upper lid is being closed to. And that's being remapped from zero to one. And the bottom one, this is the X. This is going from left to right. It moves it just a little bit extra. Oh, okay, I think I'm overthinking it. It's just that when you add it past one, it just stays at maximum closure. So yeah, we just, we just do our two remaps, plug them into a plus minus average, and then uh, plug those into the actual curve attach. Simple. But the first thing we need to do is actually connect these controls to the curves. Let's actually hide the joint group. I don't think we need to see that right now. Why 
Why can't I... Oh, right, we didn't build it yet. Okay. So let's go to the browse file and grab the curve attach section. Just a couple lines. Offset in list of offsets. I guess we need to create. A list of offsets. Offs. And we don't need to do the. Corners, so we'll just drop it in here. Where we looked through and created the non corner controls. Offs. And control level two, I believe. So for off in offs, it's going to unparent, or it's going to list the children, unparent the children so that it can move, and then it'll drop it back on at the end. Runs curve attach. We're attaching it to curve upper. And turns off and Harris transform. Make sure that works. No errors. Ah! Something's freaking out. What did I do? Oh, we don't want to attach it to curve upper, duh. We want to attach it to these vertical curves. So we need a list of these vertical curves. Hmm. So it's it's looping through the... Wait a second. We should just be doing this inside the loop when it creates the proxies. Yeah. So back up here. Get rid of this offsets thing. We don't need that. So as it's creating major controls, we already know we can already get offset one. We don't need kid except control one. is just control 2, control level 2. And we're attaching it to, I think we can get the name of these curves from the name of the control or the proxy we're currently working with. So it looks like We replace underscore upper with nothing, and then underscore proxy with underscore curve. So, control zero, or whatever. I said proxy because I was looking at the locator proxies there. But in this case, it's going to be replacing control with curve. So control dot zero dot replace underscore upper with nothing. And then this whole thing is gonna be another replace. Of underscore control underscore CRB. Hopefully that works. No errors. No cycles. And if I find the point and curve info node, it 
should slide. Nice. Thought I was turning percentage on. See what's going on here. Looks like it plopped it to the top instead of where it was supposed to be. Attach percentage one, move one. Thought maybe it's because percentage is on that it plopped it into the wrong spot. Yes. So when you turn it on to percentage, it moves it to one, which is super annoying. Well, I guess we have to calculate, we have to convert this into a zero to one value. So we need to do, we need to figure out what the, what the parameter max is, which I think we figured out a, a line for before. What is we need to query this first? Dot parameter. Dim, 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 dim. So param is equal to cmds dot get adder. Dot parameter. Does curve attach return when I curve info node, I wonder? Yes, it does. Sweet. Let's see. Query that. And then query the max. Max param is equal to cmds dot I don't remember how we did this I think it's just part of curve let me look it up going to my Python page. Curve. Thought it was here. Maya query max. Parameter. Figured this out the other day, but I don't remember. This was so easy to find last time. What's going on? Prof Elements asks, huh? You can script rigs? Oh yes, I mean every most most rigs are being run through some sort of scripted system or another it just takes too long to do it but from scratch and creates too much variability and user error between uh between each rig that we get created and for advanced rigs you really need to automate it or it just takes too long maybe it's not called parameter maybe it's called something else Go back to this curve page. Sorry, it's on my third monitor right now. Degree. No. Point. Damn, that's not it. Oh wait, maybe it's under the point on curve info.
Yeah, you can query the parameter with the point and curve info node. Where were we writing this? Point on curve. I assume we just give it the name of the curve, which is, is it this whole mess here? Vert, so we can call it easier. Vert. Query is equal to one, parameter is equal to one. Let's try to print max param. No object was specified to query 105. So that point on curve was not run correctly. Let me look at the examples. No object was specified to query 105. CRV vert. Where is it going? Wait, is it P? Why did I write P? Is that what it said parameter was? Yeah, it is. I guess I'll try it without the query? Or maybe I'm supposed to reference it in a specific way. Also, I'm not sure if this is correct. The querying the parameter might just say the current parameter. How do we find the max parameter? Maya query max parameter curve. Didn't find anything when I typed this in last time though. under the curve command again. I feel, like, I feel like parameter is just like the number of CVs it has or something, but I thought I found a cleaner way to query this. Degree at a point, nah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. Maybe there's a curve info command or something. Looks like rebuild curve has a query mode. Let me just look at this curve visually. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have six. Six CVs on this curve. One of them is a knot. I don't really fully understand what knots are, though. And now let's comment these out and build it. Oops. 
So let's turn off percentage. Oh, wait a second. What the heck? Oh, it looks like it's building from the bottom up. Hmm. Now, why is it getting this number three point something as the full length of it? And in percentage mode, zero should put it... What? No, I'm confused. Hold up. Maybe it's because it parented it after doing something. Okay, yeah. So let's zero this one out so we can visualize where it actually is. And off percentage, zero, one, two, three. Three is the full length of it. And percentage on, zero is the base, one is the tip. Frustrating that turning on percentage doesn't maintain its current position. I guess because it's building the same curves every time, we can just assume that three is the max on every one. Let me just double check. Let's try like 2.9 and then three. Oh, it's not moving actually. Oh wait, that's because we're in percentage mode, never mind. Three is there. Two point whoops. Two point nine three three point one. Okay. Three point oh one. Yeah, three is definitely the max. And it should be for all these curves. So all we should have to do is get the param and then do three divided by param. That's the percentage, I think. And then we will, well, it's already in, sorry, in percentage mode. Let me just do a set adder, dot parameter, set it to be that percentage, see if that works. Hope this works, because some reason I can't figure out how to actually query the full size. Invalid number 106. Oh, uh, whoops. This was supposed to be a POC and then set the percentage. Tree Frog Writer says this has come a long way. Thank you. Okay, it built it. Let's see what this looks like. No! It's still at zero. Why? Set it to 1.145. That number doesn't sound right. No, it's supposed to be between zero and one. Okay, so we had our number of like, it was like two point something. And we ask, yeah, there's something up with the math here. Let me, let me re rebuild this so we can look at it. Rebuild this without this thing. So here is what it currently looks like, in theory. So without percentage on, without percentage on, 
the value is set to 2.621 out of a maximum of three. So it's almost all the way there. And then what I did was I said three, which is the max divided by two. You know what? I don't think it's divided by two. I think it's minus two or is it? I'm trying to figure out what this number on a zero to one value would be. But what I realized is that because I built these curves stupidly to have zero at the bottom and one at the top, this might be a little more confusing. So three divided by, let me bring up a calculator. Three divided by 2.621 is 1 1.14. 1.14. I guess we need to figure out This should be such a simple thing. I'm just so bad at math that it's not coming to my mind exactly what I have to do to figure out what 2.621 out of 3 is on a 1 to 0 ratio. I can bring up... Uh, bring up paint and draw this out a little bit. So we have this linear direction that goes from 1 to 0, and the linear direction that goes from 3 to 0, and a number that sits here at 2.621. And we need to figure out what that same position equals on a 1 to 0 line. And I feel like it should just be like the simplest division equation or something. But for some reason my brain is farting out. 2.621. Oh. All we need to do is figure out what percentage 2.621 is out of 3. So let me open up my embarrassingly always necessary percentage calculator. Wow, that was a loud plane. Planes don't normally fly over this place. Well, hope nothing's wrong out there. Percentage calculator. So, 2.621 is what percentage of 3? Tell me how to divide that. <clears throat> okay, so it was just the opposite way around. So 2.621 divided by 3 is, I think, the exact value we want. We'll see. So param divided by 3. See if that's what we wanted. right cool let's look at that point on curve yeah it said at the point 874 that's what we wanted hooray so now what we need to do is create two separate remap nodes for when this object moves up it will slide up to a full value of one and when it slides down it'll slide to a value of zero Glad that math equation didn't take as long to solve as that one the other day. Oh, you know what I realized? Hmm.
think it'll probably still work, but I was realizing the whole moving it side to side thing to add some sort of bow rotational lid action. I'm gonna have to do it twice, one for the upper action and one for the lower action, but I think it'll still work. Or maybe I can somehow connect them all together, we'll see. But I'm gonna take another bathroom break. Or I honestly might call it. It's been over two hours, and I think we've hit a good stopping point. I think just next time we'll come back and uh, and work on plugging in the actual blank. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will roll the credits now. Thank you, everyone that donated bits and followed today. I like how Jimmy's emojis work together. Goodbye, everyone.